Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX. Thanks for joining me today. And today we're having a look at three radios and the eagle-eyed amongst you will realize that two of them are actually the same. That's because previously on the channel we've looked at this, which is the TID radio. Apparently that's how I'm supposed to say it. TDH3. And you can see my review of this radio linked sort of just up there. However, since this radio came out, TID Radio have been back in touch and said, would you mind having a look at this and having a look at the Quansheng UVK5 and seeing why you might want to buy each radio. Now, I'm going to say this as I normally say in every of my videos uh, where I do a review of a product is that TID Radio are seeing this at the same time you are. They have no editorial control over what I'm going to say. Um, and all of the opinions are my own. Let's start by comparing them. And I'm gonna move the jazzy crystal one just out of the way for a second. And we'll come on to why I've got two of the DH3s in a minute. But let's look at uh, both the TID Radio TDH3 against the Quenching UV K5. If we turn both of them on, we can see some differences here. The first off is that I want to mention is they both got a similar size screen. They are both purport to be a 1.44 inch screen. However, as we can see on the uh, Quansheng, it's a black and orange, uh, whereas on the H3, it's full color. That's very nice to look to. Uh, one thing that I mentioned in my uh, initial video of the uh, H3 was the fact that you couldn't turn down the brightness. I'm happy to say that that's now been fixed in firmware so that you can now turn down the brightness of the screen, which makes using it at night or inside a lot more pleasant on the eye. It's a shame it doesn't have auto brightness, but you know, that might be asking a bit too much. Both radios can be programmed using a standard uh, K connector as they're called. It's the same thing that Ken would kind of use. Uh, they both have that option. Um, uh, so if you've got a programmer cable from an old Baofeng, that will work for program both of these radios. However, where the H3 steps ahead is the fact that you can also program it via Bluetooth and the very handy USB type C connector on the side, which is something I wish we'd see from far more radios, to be honest. Uh, it's a shame that um, really, I think there's only about two radios on the market, which have a USB type C connector on that you can use for programming. One of them being the H3, the other one being the THD75. Although I know that ICOM have now announced the uh, ID52+, Plus, uh, which will also support USB-C programming. Uh, both radios feature a torch or flashlight on the top. However, the one on the H3, as I commented in my initial video on it, is fantastically bright. Uh, the one on the, um, the Quansheng is nowhere near as bright. In terms of the supplied battery, the uh, Quansheng comes with a 1600 milliamp hour, whereas the H3 comes with a two and a half thousand milliamp hour. So a much larger battery supplied uh, with the H3. Uh, now the H3 also has two PTT buttons. It's got one for the top VFO, one for the sub VFO. I'm not a particular fan of that. I prefer just to have one PTT, but it's there if you want it, or certainly be able to program that second button to do something else. Uh, the Quansheng, the K5, just has the one PTT button. Now, both of these radios support things like reception on the AM aviation band, and also things like the NOAA weather channels in the United States. Now, let's start talking about why you might buy one over another, and specifically also why I happen to have a second H3 sitting here. Let's start by talking about the uh, Quansheng. Now, people are generally buying the UVK5 because it is, well, A, it's fantastically cheap, but B, because it has the capability of running alternative firmware being developed open sourcely by lots of different developers. Now, I happen to be running the IJV mod firmware, but there is also the Exuma firmware and a bunch of others as well. And depending on your own preference will depend on what you want to do with the radio. And there's now also hardware modifications that are coming out for the K5, which increases the receive capability all the way down, right the way down to the shortwave bands, 
uh, as opposed to having the hard limit of 18 megahertz as this one does. The alternative firmware is also opening up the transmit capability of these radios. However, there comes a massive asterisk into saying that the filters in this radio are only suited for VHF, UHF, you know, transmit out of those bands at your peril. I did some testing into a dummy load uh, transmitting on what the radio reported was the six meter band. And sure enough, there was a signal on the six meter band. However, the, uh, the output power on both the second and third harmonic was far stronger than on the fundamental. So I say, take that with a massive grain of salt. So let's just pop the K5 down for just a second and let's talk about the two H3s that I've got. So I have here a uh, black one, which is running the stock firmware from uh, TID Radio. And then I have the crystal one, which is running an alternative firmware, which is being developed by a guy called Marcus. And he set up a couple of Facebook pages actually, one specifically for the H3, the other one for TID Radios or TID Radios, other radio, the H8, talking about how to add extra functionality to these radios. Now, one of the main advantages I see with the modified firmware is the fact that you're getting a proper S meter, which is something I commented on in the initial video. You're getting a proper S meter. Uh, you're also getting a battery percentage. Uh, it's also being able to start to do a bit of SSB reception. Um, and you're also able to turn the p other PTT into a sort of channel swapping method. So you can swap between the top and bottom VFA by pressing the appropriate PTT. I like that feature, that's quite handy. And you can also do some other customizations like changing the boot up logo, should you wish to, and also changing the, the S meter. Uh, so you can either be segmented or it can be a solid bar. Uh, it's just really, really handy features. And this is the main, main crux for me, is that I think the, the hacked firmware that Marcus has developed is improving the functionality of the H3 to the point where it should have been from factory on the stock firmware. The stock firmware should have an S meter. It should have the ability to turn on a uh, battery percentage rather than it just being little bars. It should have the ability to change the boot up logo. It should have the ability to change what the sub, sub PTT does. I think people buying the Quansheng UV K5 are buying it because it's cheap, but also because you might want to play around with different firmwares on it. You might want to try the Exuma firmware and see how that works, and then try IJV mod and see how that works, and then, if you're of that mind, even start developing your own firmware for it. There's nothing to say you shouldn't and can't do that. But that's the thing for me is that this radio lends itself to that because of how cheap it is. If you're buying this radio, you might not necessarily be buying this as your primary handheld. For me, it's very much a secondary or even tertiary handheld that if it gets scratched, if I drop it, if I lose it, I don't really care. This one cost me 13 pounds. I don't know how they make it for that money. Whereas I think the TID radios they feel better in the hand, they feel a bit better made, which is nice, and they look fantastic, and I particularly like the crystal colour, I really love that one. But, it is potentially a primary radio, it's potentially the radio you're going to pick up and use as either your, your, yeah, your first radio, you're not necessarily buying it because you want to hack the firmware, you're buying it because you want a radio. You want a handheld radio that is easy to program, offers that Bluetooth programming, uh, has a nice color screen on it, has fantastic receive audio, because it really does, good transmit audio as well, but you're not buying it to necessarily hack around with. There's nothing to stop you doing that, but it is more expensive than, than a UVK5 by you know at least double, depending on where you buy it from. So. That's it for me, is the way I'm justifying this in my head is that I'm not much of a hacker in terms of, I'm never gonna be going out and creating my own firmware for a radio. So the, this is a nice toy, but it's not the radio I'm going to pick up if I want reliable communication. Whereas I would happily pick up 
um, these radios, the, the H3s, for reliable communication. But I think, and this is a message to you, TID Radio, is you need to catch up with your stock firmware, adding the functionality that Marcus has developed in his firmware in order to make the stock firmware more usable on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I think if you're buying this radio, and please prove me wrong in the comments, but if you're buying this radio, you're buying it because you want a handheld to use, not because you're buying a handheld that you want to hack around with. And I think that's a really important distinction. So ultimately, which radio do I recommend you go out and buy? Well, it depends on who you are. If you want to hack around with firmware, if you want to play around, maybe develop your own code, then sure, go out, buy a Quan chain, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun to play with, don't get me wrong. Uh, but know that your transmit audio is not necessarily going to be the greatest. Your receive audio is not going to be the greatest. But as a radio to hack around with and play around with for dirt cheap money, it's a great option. If you want to buy a radio because you want to have a nice radio to you know, actually use, again, this may not necessarily be your primary radio. If you've got something like a Yaesu, an Icon or a Kenwood, something like this is not going to be your, 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 your primary radio. But it's a good backup. And certainly if you're new to the hobby or you don't have a handheld and you're looking to buy one, you could do a lot worse than these. But go out, buy one, and then immediately go to Facebook and download Marcus's firmware because it adds more functionality to the radio that you're likely to use on a day-to-day -day basis than you're likely to do with, with the hacked firmware in, in the K5. So I'm interested to know uh, what you've done with your UV K5. If you've got one, are you running this stock firmware that came with it? Are you running IJV mod? Are you running something else? Let me know what I should do with mine because honestly, not quite sure. Um, and if you've got an H3, I'd be interested to know, are you running the stock firmware or are you running hacked firmware? And what additional functionality would you like to see after this radio? Because um, I've got a bit of an open line of communication with TID radio uh, and they are always uh, excited to hear new ideas uh, about what their radios should and could do. So uh, let me know in the comment section down below. If you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. If you haven't, there's another one that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button as it really does help me out. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.